In this video, we're going to go over how to add an SD card logger to your ZF9P rover. Now, previously we were using Bluetooth to pull in our rover uh, observation file data and record that on our smart device, on our cell phone. However, we've noticed that once in a while the Bluetooth will drop out, and that means our observation file is going to have holes in the data for seconds if not longer and that poses a problem later on when you're trying to um, find a fix in PPK solutions. So this Adafruit Ada logger, it's a Feather M0. It's only $20 and it's pretty robust. It's based off of the Arduino Zero. It uses the same chip. It runs at a 48 megahertz and it has plenty of memory. It's got 32K of RAM for what we need to do. We're basically just reading in our uh, observation data and recording it to the SD card. Now, when we first started out looking around, we saw this data logger out there by Paul um, on GitHub. He is out of UK. He's a freelance electronics engineer, Paul Clark. He's got a lot of other Arduino sketches out there, not just for ZF9P, but also for other GNSS modules. So definitely go out there and check his GitHub site out. He's got plenty of interesting projects to try out. But you can see in his, his is pretty basic as far as the ADA logger is connected to the ZF9P and it just basically reads in data from the RX receiving and records that to the SD card. Now we forked off of his GitHub code and we enhanced ours a little bit in that it has an LCD screen on it. So it can show you real time what's happening. And our wiring diagram, as you can see, is a little bit more complex. We included our Bluetooth module that we had used previously on our, um, our rover. But this LCD display, it's pretty easy to set up. And if you go into our GitHub, you'll see that there is a third sketch here. These first two are from Paul. And this third one is mostly Paul's code but it is we have added additional code here for the LCD screen and also for the reset switch in Paul's code he was stopping the logger from once you hit the reset button if you um, push that it would just stop logging and wait for you to reset it in ours if you hit the um, reset button it's going to stop logging close the file and then it's going to start logging into a new file so it just was something to fit into what we needed there but other than that as far as um, that third sketch the only other enhancement we added was to this hardware um, file instructions and we show here Everything else in here was by Paul, but we added in our LCD display, and um, here we discuss about the LCD screen. You can change the background color um, in the sketch, and we show you where to do that. And we also talk about adding in the Bluetooth module, which we had previously, but it's not that hard. We just added it to our, we have it connected to the UART2 on the ZF9P. And that just reads in the corrections automatically from our base and it runs those through and creates our observation file, which is recorded on the SD card. All right, let's go take a look at how ours looks in, in real life. All right, let's check out what happens when we plug this in. We'll get a basic idea. So when you initially plug it in, we're gonna get a splash screen just from the LCD screen. Then we're gonna go through an initializ initialization process with the feather board booting up. Now we're gonna see GNSS found. 
rover mode selected. Now it's gonna initialize the SD card. At any of these points, if it does not detect the SD card, it would stop there and throw an error. Now it's waiting for the GNSS fix from our antenna. Depending on if this is a cold start or a hot start, it may take anywhere from seconds to minutes. Usually though, it usually only takes like 30 seconds or so. And there we go. Now we can see it's logging to this file name, uBlocks extension, UBX. And right now we have our setup as logging every 60 minute interval, but in the sketch, the Arduino sketch, you can set that to be whatever you want, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Now let's take a real quick look at also here on the side, we have our momentary push button here that when we push this, it's going to reset the, the board and it's going to stop logging to this file and start logging to a new file. All right, let's push that. There we can see file closed and then we're logging to a new file name. Now, if you don't, if you use the original sketch provided by uh, Paul, <clears throat> the one we forked off of in GitHub, if you push that momentary switch, it would just stop completely and wait for you to reset it. Well, we just made a slight adjustment in the code. We have that on in our GitHub site to well, once you push that momentary switch, it's gonna reset it and then it'll start logging again to a new file. There's no need to unplug it and plug it back in again. Okay, let's check out the inside. Now we can see we have the outside here of this IP67 box. Uh, so for the LCD screen, we have a I squared C connector this little guy right here. So we're able to connect the ZF9P using the I squared C port there. And it makes for easy communication. And also you can use other um, I squared C peripheral devices on this, not just one. So over here we have the feather board, the, the Adafruit logger and in the back here, we can see the momentary push button uh, wired through there. We have it soldered. Here we have the small, I believe this is a 350 milliamp battery that's connected to the feather board. This allows, in case the USB power is disconnected, this battery right here will provide enough power to keep this thing logging. And it also provide power to the ZF9P. Also here we have, just like we saw before, we have the Bluetooth module that is pulling in our RTCM corrections and sending that to UART2 on the ZF9P. And otherwise, all of the wiring connections you can see uh, in our wiring diagram. All right, now that we've recorded our observation files on our rover, we can process this for PPK. You'll see here we have our SD card and an SD card reader. Each day that this we run this on, it's going to create a different folder for that day. And then in that folder, each folder will create different files um, depending on how long you've timed out or if you've hit the reset button. And if you open up one of these, it's just going to look like garbage data, it's all binary, so you can't really read it. You can see some NEMA messages in here, but other than that, it's garbage. So we need to process this in order to get a Rhinex file for PPK. The way we do that is through this RTK convert, RTK CONV, and note that we're using the RTK Live Explorer version, which is for the ZF9P for dual band. The latest one right now, latest version is this Demo 5 B33C. We'll leave a link in the description to his website. He has additional instructions and um, the downloads for this. So we'll go in here and select the file that we want to process. 
And we'll just pick a random one here. And you'll notice that in the same folder, it'll create this observation and a navigation file. And in his instructions, you'll, on RTK Live Explorer's instructions, he'll show you um, additional information on what is set up in here. But you'll want to make sure it's set up for Baidu also because ZF9P is um, going to pull that in. But anyway, after you select that file, you click Convert. And we can see here that it created our observation and our navigation files. And it's in readable format now. And then through this, using this observation and navigation files from our rover, we can combine this with CORE's um, data corrections that are free on the CORE's website, C-O-R-S. Um, we'll provide a link to that also in the description. And using those three files, you can then um, create a PPK solution um, and get pretty accurate results. All right, well, hopefully this helps um, get you going on an SD card logger with the LCD screen and some other features that might be helpful for you. All right, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.